Hello everybody, welcome to the I Am IT YouTube channel. My name is Shabazz Dan as ever, I am the IT Geek. We are still on the SC100 Microsoft Cybersecurity Architect exam topic series and we are um, halfway through topic 10. Uh, we're in the last, last, last third of our last quarter, you could say, of the, the old series. Uh, 15 topics in total, so we're coming towards the last four to five topics. Um, and this one's very much about sort of um, cloud app and application security in this topic. Uh, so today we're actually going to be on part three of the topic 10. So let's crack on with this episode. As I mentioned, this is topic 10, part three of the SE100 Microsoft Cybersecurity Architects exam topic series. Uh, and this topic is designing solutions for securing applications. And today we're going to talk about the application security lifecycle, talk about designing a solution for API management security. Um, and then we are going to then jump into the portal and look at so sort of as your API management and how you can maybe you know some of the security you can choose within the within the Azure portal. And we'll do that for the for the demo. Uh, so let's talk about application security lifecycle first of all. So a zero trust model uh, ensures protection uh, of of your data by applying controls and technologies to sort of discover shadow IT, ensure appropriate in permission apps. You know, limit access based on real time analytics and monitor sort of for abnormal behavior and validating, making sure you validate secure configuration options. And the objectives really are to gain visibility into activities and data in your applications by connecting to them via APIs, to discover and control the use of shadow IT, to protect sensitive information and activities automatically by implementing policies. Strengthening protection against cyber threats and you know rogue applications, and finally assessing the security posture of your cloud environments, uh, and obviously the, that, that all fits into the application lifecycle management uh, that Defender for Cloud Apps can give you. Let's talk about designing a solution for API management and security. Now, this is going to be what our demo is based on, looking at some of those functionality and those features within API management. Uh, so Azure API Management is, is made up of a sort of API gateway, uh, management plane, and a sort of developer portal. And these components are Azure hosted, Azure hosted, and they're fully managed by, by default. API Management is available in various tiers that differ in sort of capacity and features. So about the API gateway first. So all requests from sort of client applications first reach the API gateway. And that then forwards them to sort of respective backend services. The API Gateway acts as a sort of facade to sort of the backend services, allowing API providers to abstract the API implementations involve backend architecture without impacting the API consumers. The Gateway enables consistent configuration of routing, security, throttling, caching, and observability. Specifically, the, the Gateway acts as a sort of facade to the backend services, as we mentioned, by, by accepting those API calls and routing them to the appropriate backends. And it verifies API keys and, and sort of other credentials such as the JWT tokens and certificates presented with requests. It enforces usage quotas and rate limits. It optionally it transforms requests and responses uh, you know, as, as responses specified in the sort of policy statements. If configured, it caches, caches responses to improve response latency and sort of minimize the load of backend services. There is, as we call, a self-hosted gateway. So with the self-hosted gateway, customers can deploy the API gateway to the same environments where they host their APIs to optimize API traffic and ensure compliance with sort of local regulations and guidelines. The self-hosted gateway is going to enable customers to, with hybrid IT infrastructures, to manage APIs hosted on premises and across sort of clouds from single API management services in Azure. The self-hosted gateway is sort of packaged as a Linux-based Docker container and is commonly deployed uh, to Kubernetes, including Azure Kubernetes services like AKS uh, and Azure Arc enable Kubernetes. Let's talk about the management plane now. So API managers interact with sort of services through the management plane, which provides sort of full access to API management service capabilities. You basically use the management plane to provision and configure API management service settings to define or import API schemas from like a wide range of sources. You know, package APIs into products, set up policies like quotas or transformations on, on the APIs. Also get insights from analytics and, and also manage users. Uh, Microsoft Cloud Security Benchmark API Security Baseline also outlines, sev outlines several controls for secure API management. Um, sort of seven main areas. We'll take a look at those shortly. Uh, so speaking of which, we're going to take a look at those now. So some of the baseline 
Uh, again, we can take a look at some of these in the demo as well from, from a, as your API manager. Is that first of all, that network security. So you've got NS1, NS2, and NS6. Um, so obviously the NS, NS1 is to establish network segmentation and boundaries. NS2 is to secure cloud services and network controls. NS6 is to deploy uh, the WAF, the web application firewall. And again, these will allow you to increase that security posture within API management. Uh, so this includes things like you know deploying as your private link, disabling public network access, uh, implementing network security groups or NSGs. We then have the sort of um, identity management uh, sort of baselines for Azure API management. Those include IAM 1, 3, 5, and 8. So IAM 1 is around using centralized identity, so you know, uh, on tray authentication for the data plane access. IAM 3 is around managing application identity securely and automatically, so again, using sort of managed service identities generated by. Um, Entra. Uh, IAM5 is around using single sign-on. IAM8 is around restricting the exposure of credentials or search credentials and secret support integration with Azure Keybolt. So using Keybolt essentially to store those secrets. Uh, we then have privileged access. So this is PA1, 7 and 8. PA1 is around separating and separate and limit highly privileged admin users. So again, um, you know, if local admins aren't required for routine administrative operations, disable them. PA7 is to follow the just uh, enough administrative, so least privileged access principle, so using RBAC for the data plane basically in Azure. And PA8 is to determine <coughs> access across the sort of cloud provider, so customer lockbox using that is a good example. We then have the baselines for data protection, so this is DP, so DP3, 6, and 7. DP3 is around encrypting sensitive data in transit. So data and transit encryption, basically configuring that. DP6 is using secure key management, so Azure Key Vault and using that. And DP7 is using a secure certification management, again, using Azure Key Vault, uh, setting up and integrating that with API management. Then have the uh, final one, which is discussed around baselines for API management, is asset logging and backup, so AM2, LT4, and BR1. <clears throat> so AM2 is around asset management, uh, and that's using only approved services. So again, as your policy is implementing that. LT4, which is sort of logging, is enabling logging for security investigations, so enabling logging within API management. Finally, making sure BR1 is on regular backup, so you know, making sure they're automated. And we are done now with this uh, theoretical part of this demo. Um, so I want to jump into the Azure portal, look at API management, some of the settings and how we can configure those to and better secure them. So please join me in the uh, demo portal. Hello, and welcome back. We are in the demo portal, and this is a API management services I've created just just for testing and demoing. And if we go, what I really wanted to show was we're not going to be too concerned with an overview of API management. It's kind of out of the scope of this example. I want to look at sort of the security settings that are available. Obviously, there's, there's the integration with Defender Cloud we, we talked about. Um, so if you go down to security. You can see some of the sort of um, configurations we can do. So we can do that integration with Defender uh, for cloud, first of all. Uh, we can enable it, uh, you know, enable Defender for the subscription. So we can just click on recommended. Um, and that'll take us a Defender plan. Then we can enable API management now. Just a few things to know about it. It can be quite costly. So I'm not going to enable it, but if we go down here, we can see we've not got a plan selected. If we turn it on, these are plans that are available now. Plan one is the cheapest, um, but that's two hundred dollars a month for uh, covers one million API calls. Um, go down just five plans altogether, and they go quite a bit. But but you get obviously a lot of API calls. I, I'm not going to enable it because it's kind of again I, I don't I don't use it. Um, but that is how you can enable the integration with Defender for Cloud. Then we have managed identity, so we can have a system assigned or a user assigned. And this is when you want to integrate um, API management with other applications or services within Azure, and you want to have that secure identity connection. So again, if you if if you have like if your managed identities are kind of managed within the lifecycle of the service, then do system assigned. But if you want to create them separately, so you can potentially um, you know, uh, securely connect, you know, securely have identity, IAM access uh, for multiple services or applications into API, then use user assigned and you can create a user assigned identity and again, assign that permissions. Again, from a certificates perspective, here's where we can add the certificates, but then you can actually save those 
uh, in Key Vault as well. So you can um, select the file, upload that, um, but then you know make sure you store those in Key Vault. And here again, excuse me, we've got protocols and uh, ciphers, so we can manage the API gateways protocol configuration um, to secure the API traffic. Again, you can enable and disable what you need depending on what your security requirements are. Uh, so then just wanted to give a bit of an overview of what's available from a security perspective in API management. Uh, so we are going to move on to the, the final part of topic 10. Um, and again, we're going to be covering a few different topics or a few subtopics within there, um, you know, including, again, we're sticking with that securing application sort of topic, but looking at sort of containers as well. Um, and maybe secure access to applications as well. So again, thank you for joining me. Loads of useful links in my description, including the sort of um, measure up practice exam, you know, uh, discount pay, discount to purchase the SE100 exam. Also the GitHub repository for the sort of uh, case studies, I'd re you know, recommend looking at those, but also the uh, Microsoft Learn content, which again is free and it's, it's useful. So I'd, I'd definitely recommend using that. So thank you everybody for watching. Make sure you hit subscribe. I'm aiming for 20K before the end. I'm about 13, 14K at the moment. Hit, I want to hit 20K before the end of the year. So again, thank you everyone for support. Until next time, goodbye.